Well, I think it's going to be another very tight game. Dorking have run into some really good form of late, won the last three matches. Obviously, it's important that Woking get something out of this too. Um, and um, their last game <coughs> against Barnet, they were tremendous in the second half and very unlucky not to win that game. So, it's, you know, it's all set up this afternoon for a really entertaining game. Or oh, amber shirts and uh, navy blue shorts and navy blue socks as well. They've a long shot comes in from range there. That's the first effort on target there for Woki. Other than that, neither side, uh, neither keeper has been seriously tested at the moment as Josh Taylor takes the throw in once again. There, a little flick on there, I think, from prior, but it's almost like 4 3 3 because Lofthouse is actually playing in midfield and I expected him to play more out wide on the, on the, uh, on the right hand side with Daly on the left. Dorking had themselves a throw in again on that far side, taken by Josh Taylor. Flick on from Jason Pryor, and it's tipped over the bar from Will Yaskalainen. And I think it was uh, Dan Gallagher who got the final touch. Indeed, it was. And Will Yaskalainen had to be alert to that, tipping it over the bar into the uh, huge bank of Woking supporters away to our left hand side. So but the uh, free kick will be taken by Josh Casey then for Woking. Mm. Finds Reese Brown. Brown just a lovely little turn there and looked to dispatch the shot. It was easily and comfortably blocked by Dorking Wanderers who bring it away only temporarily though. As Dan Moss picks up the loose ball, he finds Casey. Casey out to that left-hand side. And the interception there from George Frankham and Jimmy Mewitt now will go on a, a long forage forward. And he does well, it's still with Mewitt as he finds his way up to the 18-yard box. Picks out Josh Taylor, straight at the keeper. And away by Woking. That was a lovely move there. Great work from Jimmy Mewitt. A good, what, 50, 60-yard run there from Mewitt. With uh, the other matches that are taking place in the uh, National League this afternoon. Of course, a full programme of matches on this week, uh, Easter weekend as Reese Brown now... Works it down that right hand side. Lovely bit of work from Reese Brownie. Twisted and turned and managed to get the cut it ball back and the shot came in. It was blocked away. It was on target. Talking Wanderers managed Not to sure. clear it. Throw in for the cards on that far side. Reese Brown, who's getting ceremoniously booed by the Talking Wanderers supporters following that last little escapade a few minutes ago. Here's Jimmy Mewitt now finding Pryor. Pryor back to Josh Taylor who drives it forward. McShane looking for a first time pass to release Mewitt. He was asking a little bit much of the flying winger there for Dorking. But they have possession again now, Mark White side on that right hand side. Here's Taylor twisting and turning. Shadow by his opposite number, James Kellerman. The cross comes in and it's headed away. Ooh, headed wide I should say by James McShane but another opportunity there for Dawkins and a good one at that so it's an in swinger it's a good one at that and the header just over the bar there I think it might have been Rohan Ince oh, in fact it was uh, Kasper Laparta who directed his header towards goal but just couldn't quite find the target but a great uh, opportunity Escalina clears his lines. Flick on from Lofthouse, and now here's James Daly, and he just couldn't get enough purchase on the shot there. I think he was in two minds there as to whether to go for the shot or direct it towards Reese Brown there, and he, he didn't make his mind up in the end at all. There, but it's Woking who came very, very close about five or six minutes or so ago. Uh, they won a couple of corners, one of which uh, met the head of their new signing, Casper Laparta, who towered above the Dorking Wanderers' defence, but he couldn't direct it towards goal, and the danger was averted for Dorking Wanderers. Still goal is here at the Matterbank Stadium. Dorking Wanderers nil, Woking nil. It's a great counter-attack there from Dorking. <clears throat> Left-hand side. Cook. Up to the edge of the area. 
from Cook looking for McShane, but he's crowded out by a couple of amber shirts. And now Kieran Lofthouse with a surging run forward for Woken, and he goes for goal from distance. I don't really think that was the best opportunity there for Kieran Lofthouse, John. No, wrong option again. Great forward run. You know, it was. And Pye, but a really decent turnout, as you probably expect this afternoon, John. Yeah, definitely. New ground for Woking fans. They're obviously flying high in the league. Turned out in numbers. Corner comes in to the far post and. Well, it was Billy Sass Davis who managed to out jump anyone else and uh, he managed to head it towards goal, but it lacked any sort of accuracy. And Dan Lincoln was uh, able to gather very, very comfortably. Live commentary here on BBC Radio Surrey Sport, where of course we are goalless here. Dorking Wanderers nil, Woking nil, and Jimmy Mewitt dances past the challenge there of Josh Casey and manages to get a cross in looking for Jason Pry, who got there and Woking desperately trying to. Clear the ball away, it was punched away by Will Askelainen and then another foot in there to clear away the danger, but uh, slightly on the right of centre. It's taken by Casey and headed down by Sass Davis, but straight at Dan Lincoln with no real power or venom on the header. And for this uh, set piece, they are threatening, of course, from set pieces. Uh, Woking and a header off from Ammon that's away by, I think it was Tony Craig. The pressure's still on here, and the shot comes in from Kieran Lofthouse and just dragged it wide of Dan Lincoln's right hand post. Well, that's better from Woking and better from Lofthouse. Still trying to work out which position he's actually playing at the moment. Fully expected to see him operating down that right hand flank, but he's over on the left. I see him because there's so many. Supporters lining the perimeter of the pitch away to our right hand side, but we can just see the ball come into shot now. And the, it's uh, retrieved, and the shot comes in on the turn from uh, Joe Cook, I think. Might have been uh, Tony Craig, in fact. But Will Yaskalainen was there behind it. It was Tony Craig who managed to dig out the shot there. It was on target. And Will Yaskalainen talking. He finds Bauman. Bauman. Lays it all the way back to Dan Lincoln, who volleys it forward. Now with James McShane inside the centre circle. Jimmy Mewitt with plenty of space on this right-hand side. McShane finds him. Here is Mewitt now. Josh Casey ahead of him. Mewitt dances into the 18-yard box, but could only pick out Rohan Ince. And the chance had gone, but George Frankham now picks up the loose ball for Wanderers. And he finds Mewitt. Mewitt cuts it back and headed out of play and over the bar by Billy Sass Davis for a corner for Dorking. Josh Taylor playing a lot deeper at the moment in the second half. Lays it back to his keeper, Dan Lincoln. Lincoln humps it forward. James McShane is there. He rounds the keeper. He's gone down and the referee signals to the penalty spot. And Dorking Wanderers have themselves a penalty here. In the early stages of the second half, and I don't think there are any arguments about that. It was a neat little bit of play there from James McShane to take the ball away from Will Yaskalainen. Now, will the Woking keeper stay on? Was there a, def a, a covering defender? John, what's your take on that? Well, first of all, it was a mistake by Lapata. He tried to head it back to Yaskalainen. He got it all wrong. The Dorking player read what was happening and he nipped in and it was a penalty all day long. I think it'll just be a yellow card for Yaskalainen because I think there were other defenders around. But Up steps Pryor and he buries it straight down the middle. And Dorking Wanderers have the lead here at the Matterbank Stadium. It's Dorking Wanderers 1, Woking 0. Calm as you like, excellent penalty, almost floated it down the middle, waited for Yaskalainen to move, and Dorking take the lead, so Woking have got it all to do now. Maybe this is the wake-up call that they need because they really haven't got going in this second half at all. They've looked all over the place. I still can't really work out what the formation is. And Josh Casey uh, under pressure there from James McShane, and he's supposed to lay it all the way back to Will Yaskalainen, who lumps it forward. Frankham there again to look it on for Dorking. Ammon heads it forward. And oh, that wasn't convincing there from Tony Craig and Reese Brown was threatening. And the shot from range comes in there. Oh, what oh, a goal! Word. What an absolutely stunning goal from Rohan Ince from all of about 
30 plus yards. It beat Dan Lincoln, all ends up. That's lifted the Woking supporters. An incredible strike, John. Unbelievable, unbelievable. And it's literally come out of nowhere. It was a clearance, it fell to ends, and he absolutely smashed it from miles out over the keeper and into the bottom corner. An incredible strike, and Woking up back in this game. No one ever saw that coming, I have to say. And it really was unbelievable. That was straight out of the top draw there from Rohan Ince, a real contender for, for goal of the season. He struck it superbly. Over that strike from Rohan Ince. Here's uh, James McShane now looking to feed Jimmy Mewitt and Josh Casey's across there, but the ball runs away from him. Mewitt gets the cross in. It's into the six yard box. It's still not cleared by Woking, it is now. And it's brought away nicely by uh, Kellerman who's on a surging run here and he picks up the return pass from Rhys Brown and Kellerman tries to get the cross in Marcus Dakers was in there as well to the far post it goes plenty in there and it's in and Woking have taken the lead and I think confirmation of who scored that one well, I thought it was Ince who bundled it over, but Cuthbert also seemed to be very excited. But again, I have said repeatedly how strong Woking are from set pieces, and that just proved my point. It was a corner to the back stick. Woking players won it, headed it across, and either it was Ince or Cuthbert on the line that bundled it in, and the game has just completely changed in the last two or three minutes. What a transformation. An absolutely incredible turnaround here at the Meadowbank Stadium. It's now Dorking Wanderers 1, Woking 2, confirmation. Spell. As Woking came from behind in the 74th minute to level it and then take the lead two minutes later through Rohan Ince after James Pryor, uh, Jason Pryor should say, had put uh, Dorking ahead through the penalty spot and here is Dakers through on goal and Dan Lincoln just about managed to get enough on the ball to deny the Woking striker well that was a great opportunity really was Daka should have buried that you know he was one on one great run of form though Gates said I mean Woking have got to play them very soon I think I heard Aldershot were winning I think yep yeah, Aldershot are now one all with Yeovil that's a really sorry important, drawing <laughs> yeah, really important match that has a big bearing on the to call Cool with a searching pass and picks out Seb Bauman. Bauman cuts inside onto his right foot, still with Bauman, and then he dug out the shot. Bobby Joe Taylor had plenty of space on this right hand side. Josh Taylor was in a good position uh, just outside the D as well in the centre of the field, too. And that was a wasted opportunity. Brown, possibly Gallagher as well, but he kept a level head and just had a strong word with both players as Bobby Joe Taylor gets a dangerous sweeping ball into the uh, box but there wasn't a red and white player there to apply the final touch far so. side it was taken by Dan Lincoln to Joe Cook Cook up to Pryor lovely little header on there from Pryor and now here's uh, Bobby Joe Taylor who's picked out by Josh Taylor Bobby Joe Taylor drifts into the 18 yard box and and it was a cross come shot I think it was a shot in the end but it was straight at uh, Will Yaskalainen and Wrong option safe. again. Wrong option, really, you know. Difficult to see any players at all. Throw in is taken by Kellerman and the referee, Gary Parsons, brings the match to a close. A massive three points for Woking in their quest for promotion this season, especially with Chesterfield looking as though they're slipping up at home to York City uh, this afternoon. As for Dorking Wanderers, they took the lead in this game, of course, through Jason Pryor in the 64th minute. That was cancelled out by a stunning strike from Rohan Ince in the 74th minute from all of about 30 yards that beat Dan Lincoln. And then just two minutes later, Dorking Wanderers uh, caught cold at the back following a corner kick and Rohan Ince took advantage to make it 2-1. That's how it ended. The three points go back to the Lathwaite Community Stadium. It's ended here. Dorking Wanderers 1, Woking 2.